Win or lose, Donald Trump's campaign will have a lasting impact on U.S. politics, and some say for the worse. Writer Sarah Kenzior wrote an article in Foreign Policy titled, Welcome to Donald Trump's America. She says Donald Trump is helping to make extremism mainstream. Sarah joins us now live from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, thanks for being here, Sarah. How is he doing this? How is he making extremism mainstream? Uh, well, he's been doing it since the moment he announced his candidacy. And, um, you know, actually well before that, he's been doing this for about 30 years. It's only now that he has a national platform. You know, all along, people have been saying that eventually Trump will pivot. They said it before the primaries. Right. They said it during the primaries. And they said it after. But what Trump's been trying to do is pivot America to his view, which is extremely paranoid, extremely bigoted, and extremely hateful. And he's been doing this, you know, with a lot of success, um, with a lot of complicity, I think, on the part of the Republican Party and also on the part of the media. When you look, and you made several points uh, in your article here, you said that, number one, one of the lasting effects of a Donald Trump uh, candidacy here, whether he wins or loses, is what you're saying, is the rise of right-wing extremism and militia groups. You also go on to say that uh, there's this economic discontent which he has, uh, which he has uh, uh, brought to a theme and, and con con consistently talking about. And you also bring up the major challenge of the decline of media. Uh, those are your three points. Uh huh. And so tell us about why you came up with these three points and, and, and what brings you to these three ideas. Um, well, those are just, you know, three points of many. I highlighted them because they both connect to this, this theme, which is how, mainstream, how extremism is mainstreamed in America. Um, you know, in terms of the first point and the, the rise of militia groups and hate groups, you know, there's been this rise going on since 2008, basically since Obama won the presidency. And what we're seeing now is a much more um, open and overt support of a presidential candidate by these kind of groups, which Trump himself has been reluctant to condemn. Um, you know, he's gone back and forth on people like David Duke, um, you know, saying that he disavows and then sort of hinting that it's okay. He's had his campaign staff tweeting out anti-Semitic memes. All these things that were once kind of, you know, dog whistles sound more like the tune of a Pied Piper leading millions of Americans astray. Um, in terms of the second point, the economic discontent, right. uh, this is real. You know, this is a genuine problem. I, I think it's been underestimated all along, you know, especially where I am right now in St. Louis. Right. I definitely think the problems of regions like this are not fully uh, depicted or described, and he's, tacked, he's tapped into that pain. But unfortunately, what he's done is he's linked it to a particular conception of who has that pain, which is a white male kind of post-industrial worker. Trump doesn't actually understand what these people do when he ran campaign ads you know he hired a Dutch model to pretend that he was a minor um, you know he's not somebody who actually you know feels the pain of the working man but unfortunately he's been able to convince a lot of people he is and how is he able to do this well a lot of that had to do with the role of the media um, which as I'm sure you know has been in financial trouble for the last 15 years they're looking for ratings they're looking for clicks they're looking for cash and a candidate like Trump is a godsend you know he'll call into every show he'll say all kinds of inflammatory right. statements and he attracts, um, you know, big crowds. And so I see why the media was, you know, airing his rallies, you know, nonstop, was giving him more coverage than any other candidate. But it's had real repercussions for real people. It's increased attacks, physical attacks on American citizens. And so, you know, I think at this point, um, you know, sometimes when I talk to members, fellow members of the media about this, they get very defensive. Um, but I think this is a time for, for everybody to be reflective about what's happened and, and do our best to, you know, stop what is a very very harmful and damaging trend for our country. Sarah Kenzie, or in St. Louis, uh, re reflecting on your article on foreign policy. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Next, Donald Trump's.